go to Bank of America and you put a $50 gold, U.S. gold coin across that teller's window into your checking account, and you come back the next day and you ask to withdraw $50, what will they hand you, a gold coin? No, that's gone. They'll hand you a $50 grant. And they're entitled to do it because the grant is legal tender. There is no bank for, in this country that will perform that function entirely with gold or entirely with silver. For very good reason, because they're in the Federal Reserve System, all of them, right? They don't want to touch gold and silver. So you have the, that problem, the convenience factor. And you certainly don't have things like debit cards or credit cards and so forth that are denominated in gold. Then you have certain tax problems because some of these transactions, various taxing authorities say, well, we have to tax them in terms of their Federal Reserve value as opposed to their uh, gold value or silver value. So you run, that's where the accountants and the tax advisors come in, and the thing becomes fairly complicated. Now, if you had a large player in the marketplace, if you had some very large entity that was buying and selling, there's a big network of other people that directly or indirectly, other entities, companies, directly or indirectly are tied into this large entity. You could imagine many of these costs involved in transitioning from one system to the other to be lowered. Economy of scale, that's called. The more people you have doing it, the less the process tends to cost. Well, think about it. Well, could IBM do that? General Motors General, go bankrupt. They were going bankrupt. Some huge corporation like that, yes. But the huge corporations are all pretty much tied into the political structure in the banks now. They don't want to ruffle those feathers, or they won't get loans or bailouts. So they're not the ones to do it. But we have another set of entities in this country that might be interested in doing. They're called the states. And they might have a number of reasons for doing this. One, because it will tend to assert their authority against the federal government, which might not be a bad idea given that's the way the Constitution is supposed to operate. Secondly, many of these states look at the present collapsing monetary system and they say, well, this has bad economic implications for us. And if we had a more stable monetary system within our jurisdiction, we might see at least economic normalcy. Because what? Capital flows to those areas that have social and economic stability. And if there's a more stable currency over here, compared to this less stable currency over there, and all of the things are equal, they have the same uh, resources and the same people and so forth, capital will flow to here rather than to there, because it doesn't want to be in a situation where it's facing that instability in the monetary system. So there are a number of reasons why a state might want to become involved in this. So a few years ago, I drafted a bill to do this in New Hampshire. <coughs> they tried to introduce it once with long story parliamentary procedure. I think they're going to introduce this again this year, but it was just introduced in Indiana. And there's talk of some people introducing it in uh, Oklahoma, and there's a bill in Georgia, and I have a fellow right, which uses coin instead of electronic gold, because of some peculiarity they have in their Georgia Constitution. So the idea is out there, kind of floating around. And what it essentially says is, here's the, here's the state, here's the great big black box of the state, and the state's taking in tax money. That's one part of the power of the purse, right? The power of tax. And it's spending some money over here. That's another part of the power of the purse. And this tax money is coming from some citizens. And this spending is going to some citizens to whom the state owes something. And we have almost a circular flow here. Almost. Because what we don't have is necessarily the connection between these two groups of citizens somehow and all the citizens in the middle. I've got a whole bunch of citizens in here. Okay. That isn't part of the structure. But the theory is that if you have enough flowing in and enough flowing out, these people at both ends will have an incentive these will have an incentive to receive the gold and silver from the market. They'll start asking their creditors to pay them. And these people will have an incentive to pay it out, or at least their creditors will ask to be paid that way. And eventually, it'll circulate through the entire system. And if you keep increasing this side over here so that more and more of the state's revenue is paid in silver and gold, 
the larger and larger part comes out here, eventually you're going to drive this part in the direction of primarily sound money. That doesn't mean these people down here won't use some Federal Reserve notes for some purposes. They probably will have to. But it won't be their primary monetary unit. And they won't be forced into the use of it because they have an alternative. Now, here is where the militia structure comes in. Because this part here, at the present time, is totally unorganized. A particular statute I drafted, these folks are organized. They're organized by the taxing power. They're told, you pay the cigarette tax people in New Hampshire. Apparently, it's the cigarette tax people in primarily in Indiana, too. Small number of distributors. They kick in about 10% of the total revenue of the state of New Hampshire, at least. It's a sin tax, or no one's going to bleed if they have to perform this function. And we wrote the statute in such a way that they could do it electronically, so they really don't have a cost so this one is automatic. It's forced this way. This one over here is the voluntary side. The state offers to people that we'll pay you. A credit of the state? We'll pay you if you ask for it and go. Until the fund runs out. First come, first serve. Until that 10% of our taxable revenue, which we're holding in gold, runs out, We'll pay first come, first serve. Well, what does that do over here? It now creates an incentive. Now more and more of these people are going to want to come sooner and sooner, one assumes, to get that gold before it runs out. And at some point, the treasurer up here, right, the treasurer, who's responsible for running this operation, comes back to the legislature and says, I need more money here. I need more gold here because the demand here is too high. In other words, the experiment is working. And he just expands this tax base. He goes, the legislature expands it to other citizens. Well, now these citizens, in order to pay their gold tax, are going to want to come in here and obtain it in the market. You see how the process works? It's kind of self-reinforcing. But it will take time. And who knows how much time? And how much time do we have? If this had been done, if this had been done 10 years ago, be done by now, We're pretty close to me. If it's done, if it started today, do we have two years? Do we have three years before you have a major monetary catastrophic event in this country? Hmm. Given what's already happened and what we can expect is going to happen? Right now you go to local coin shops and you'll find it hard to obtain. Yeah, that's right. Coin. People are already foreseeing what's going to happen here. <laughs> So the big question is this part right here. Great idea if you have enough time. But what's the expression? Long run, we're all dead. The short run, we're all dead. This is where the militia fits in. Because now we organize everybody under a militia statute. The statute says everyone has a duty to participate in the militia. And we give exemptions fairly, fairly freely to people. They pay $5 for an exemption or something so they don't have to come to the meetings. But the one group that comes to the meetings, they're going to be some businessmen. And you tell them, here's what we want you to do, starting next week. Set up a parallel price structure in your business. You know how to calculate it. You can go into the markets and look what these prices of gold and silver are versus currency, and you know the prices of your goods and services versus currency. Give us an alternative price structure and put it up there. And have in your business, and we'll provide this to you, an explanation of this for your customers. And now all of a sudden, the biggest problem here is being solved immediately. The alternative prices are developed. Now you may not be able to force people to use those until they see the monetary system break, the paper money system breaking down, then they will start to. But the system is there. It's in place. And how did we get it in place? By organizing this group. And how did we organize this group? On the basis of the constitutional authority of the sword, right? Constitutional authority of the militia. And the fascinating part about